Well, this sure brings back memories. Welcome back to my channel. If you've never been here before, I'm Fat Sajak, and I have been here before. Welcome back. How are you? Whoa. Whoa. That was a little too close to our subject matter today. Uh, I hope you're well. I hope things are going good. I hope March has been a most fortuitous month for you. This sure is stretchy. March has been fine for me. Thank you for asking. Yeah, now that we've gotten the pleasantries out of the way, let's talk about why we're here. I also chose little to no makeup because only the worst for you guys. Whoa. Today, we're gonna watch something together. And I'm guessing if you can read and you saw the title, you know what that something is. Or maybe you don't, because you just don't, you just don't know. Maybe I titled it something weird and you're like, let's better click on that. That seems to make little to no sense. She seems crazy. What drives you to my content? We're going to be talking about the return of the one, the only, Gabby. Face yourself, bitch. Hannah. If you've been here long enough, there was a whole Gabby Hannah era on this channel. I don't think I've actually spoken about her since... I mean, I think I touched on her in one of the episodes of The Dump, like, ever so briefly. And then beyond that, I don't... I think it's been... A long time before she just like disappeared off the internet. Miss Gabby has returned to us for better or worse. Probably worse. She's posted a video today entitled One Year No Social Media. Uh, she also posted a song the other day. I opened my Instagram and was immediately greeted by Gabby Hanna's face and it was it took me back to a very weird time in my life. Here we are. So we're gonna watch this video together. It's 21 minutes long. I will try to cut it down to its most essential parts. Uh, and we'll go from there. Kind of analyze the situation, see what's going on, see what Gabby's up to, hear what she has to say, my predictions. I've got a few. I haven't watched this yet. This is a live... Well, we're not live, but I will be like live reacting ahead. I will predict dancing around the uh, reasons for leaving social media, taking little to no accountability for things, plugging her single, and uh, God. Those are my guesses. Cause she was really off on a deep dive in the God thing like around the time she was manic and even a little bit before and after. So those are my predictions. Let's see if any of them come true. I'm the third psychic twin, but I'm like the Irish twin. I'm not like a triplet. And also I'm not related to them. And also I'm not psychic. Anyway, before we get started, um, all relevant links, irrelevant links, social media, Patreon, ways to pull up my pants on camera really anything you might need from me it's all linked below in the description you can find all that there uh, make sure to like the video and subscribe if you fucking want to if you don't want to whatever you're a bitch anyway Whoa. so anyway let's let's get into it so decide what you value the most because if you make the wrong choice it could cost you your head right out of the gate promo. Does anybody want to buy my shit? Literally. Audio and visual. The full experience of an artist. The artist. The only artist. Because there's only one. And the only one that exists in the world. The only artist is Gabby Hanna. Whoa. I really hope that this coffee table can hold my weight. Just <laughs> like put some on. I think you look great, Gabby. We've all put on a little weight. We've also learned that one of her cats is still alive at least, so that's good. They survived. Not that I think she would like 
hurt her cats. I'm just, you get it, I think, I hope. If you don't, I just, whatever, let's keep going. I really battled with myself on whether or not I was going to come back to the internet because being completely unplugged, I just don't know that I could ever explain like how good it was. Right out of the gate, I have to ask, then why are we here? Because <laughs> like if it was that good, it was that like seemingly enriching, then I don't know why you would come back. If it was that good, cut and run, man. Just just get out of there. Reality is that most people watching this video have no idea what it's like to be completely detached like that because we're not allowed to. I feel like that's a pretty broad statement considering she's a millennial, a a mid-millennial. And by mid, I mean like like in the middle of the generation of millennials. Um, and we grew up without phones, and most of us without internet, you know, I didn't have my first cell phone until I was 18. This is Life Alert. Are you okay? I'm calling for help right now. We only had internet when I could steal AOL discs from Blockbuster. I think certainly people of my generation, the millennials, specifically like the elder millennials, I feel like we are unique in that we're special snowflakes but also like we grew up without it so we remember how great it was before it existed and now that i think everybody's sort of having the slow realization that things are better when we didn't know as much <laughs> in some ways uh things were better when we didn't have the the doom scroll 24 7 you know and yeah, I'm honestly social media for the most part. Because I mean, like, you could still have social contacts online before social media. Even MySpace. Okay, first of all, this is Life Alert. Are you okay? MySpace was so fucking wholesome. We were all just fucking taking nice pictures of ourselves at weird angles, putting like sparkles on it, picking a new favorite song to be the song on your play on your page every fucking day blocking jeffree star the biggest controversy during the time of myspace was like why didn't you put me in your top eight and then they expanded it to like top 16 and top 32 and then it was like okay well now i have more space than i have friends so like this is i think that's where social media started making you feel bad about yourself but we also had things like aim and chat rooms and things like that which were allowing us to connect with pretty much just fucking strangers but there wasn't the pressure of everybody seeing our every move even as just regular ass people you know what i mean i feel like that was a really long diatribe for only being like 30 seconds into this video so let's just continue you're obviously somebody who consumes youtube content hi thanks for being here make sure to like and subscribe tiktok or instagram or twitter which is by the way the dark web now when did twitter become the dark web i didn't know that twitter was the dark web i didn't know twitter was the dark web i didn't know twitter was the dark web i had no idea when did Twitter become the dark web? That's a very valid question and I will be asking it the rest of the night because what? Dude, I was gone so long that when I decided to download social media again, I kept looking for Twitter. I was like, where's Twitter? I kept typing it into the app store and it took me so long to figure out that it's called X now. That's super weird because when you search um, Twitter in the app store, it says X, formerly Twitter. I'm just, 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 just putting that out there in the universe. And it makes sense. I feel like it's called X because it's literally X-rated. It is the dark web. I've never seen so much and in one place immediately. Like, I did not consent to this. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to disagree. I think Twitter is a, a cesspool of trash now. But that's not what the dark web is. <laughs> like... There's, there's many horrors on the dark web, but graphic images, no matter how disturbing, it's not really what that is. 
But let's not get hung up on technicalities. Let's carry on. I feel like I'm gonna delete that app. But anyways, TV shows like Amazon Prime or Hulu or Netflix. So I didn't just get off social media. For about a quarter of this journey, maybe a third of this journey, I wasn't even consuming any type of content on screens. I wasn't watching anything, not TV shows, not movies, nothing. And I really wanna share what that experiment and what this experience was like. Do you think that we could share it without the gesticulation because it's a little bit much for me right now. I had a long day at work and I'm just trying to get through this in one piece. Would that be okay with you? But first, <laughs> some quick plugs. I've been gone for a year, so please indulge me. No. Does anybody want to buy my shit? After literally spending two and a half minutes, I just combed through it. After spending two and a half minutes doing of this 21 minute video, doing self-promotion after being gone for a year, after just it, touching on briefly how toxic the internet is. Um, she sums it up nicely like this. Go stream my new music. I have a lot more music coming and I would love your support on that. My new design company, lookdesign.co. Go cop some shirts. Patreon is back. Go become a member and trying out Cameo, and it's all sitting on a brand new website, gabbyhannaofficial.com. Go sign up for texts and emails. And I'll trade you my shirt for a grilled cheese. There's the commercial you asked for. Welcome back to consumerism. Okay, so why did I step back for so long? I think that there's some obvious reasons for a lot of you. You might have guessed a few reasons. A very extended manic episode in which you were declaring yourself the second coming of Christ, being so relentlessly online that your personal safety was at stake when a young man took it upon himself to coerce himself into your home. The way you were treating other people was not uh, super fantastic. Life was consumed by weed and talking about weed and everything that has to do with weed. Is it any of those things? Because uh, those are my guesses. Gabby? There's some reasons that were more personal to me, but I would say that the thing that forced me to take the break that I desperately needed since 2018 was honestly just not wanting to be a part of so much drama. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Well, that sure is oversimplifying. And stop giving the public so much access to me. I could not get online without seeing a new rumor, a new story. It just wasn't fun to be online anymore. Oh, we're doing this? I mean, this was on in part of my predictions. I'm two for four thus far, I think. I don't remember what the other two were. Wasn't really? We're okay. 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 Here's the thing. I can respect not wanting to talk about um, whatever sort of like mental health crisis she might have been experiencing at the time, which was very, very apparent. Um, as she can tell the world she was acting or um, doing art all she wants, that was not, that was not art. That was, that was something that needed attention, to put it mildly. She was a cause for concern for her own safety and well-being. To oversimplify that to internet drama and rumors spread about her and all of that is so fucking on brand for Gabby Hanna. Like online was my safe space since, since I was a kid. This is where I came to make friends because I was too scared in person to talk to people. But all of a sudden my comment section were just filled with so much vitriol that it was just like, why am I even here? Your comment section was filled with vitriol because your mouth was full of vitriol. And this is pre like manic episode. And by the way, when I speak of Gabby's manic episode, I do speak with it. I do speak to it with respect. I'm not trying to simplify or um, mock or um, understate that time because genuinely it was upsetting to watch. It was very, very disturbing to watch whatever that was unfold. And um, I, I don't want to come at that with any sort of disrespect, but I do think that two things can be true at once. And Gabby spent a lot of years before that causing a lot of shit, pretending that she doesn't, 
but causing a lot of shit. It wasn't me. Starting a lot of shit with a lot of people and then going, I didn't do that. I don't start drama. Please show me where I start drama. It wasn't me. Yeah, yeah, this feels about right. I actually tried to take a step back so many times before this big recent break, but I always had some type of contractual obligation that I needed to be there for. It was either a book deal that I was obligated to promote through a certain number of videos, a book tour, an album I'd been working on for years. Actually, no, two albums that I'd been working on for years. A podcast that had ads booked out for literally months that I had to fulfill. So I was bound legally and financially to stay. Yeah, that's, um, that's absolutely true. I do remember when she was putting out her book and she was like, I don't wanna be here right now, uh, but my publisher says I have to be. And nothing makes me wanna buy your art more. Sure, and I'm sure that's frustrating because that gives you little to no, I don't wanna use the word autonomy, I don't feel like that's the right word, but little to no control over your mental health when you have to be in the place that causes you um, frustration or pain or anguish of some sort however that is your job you wanted to create and you wanted to create in a digital space and you're you built an audience in a digital space so um also you opened this video with an ad for your product so if you want the fantastic opportunity to write a book two books to put out albums to um, have a successful podcast, to have a job at all with steady income, um, you have to abide by a schedule. And if the job isn't working for you, if you're, the job is causing you mental anguish, then it's time to find a new job because that's how it works in the real world. I had a job that I absolutely hated that triggered my OCD so badly I had a four day anxiety attack. I didn't have that job anymore and then I felt better. Again, not to oversimplify any sort of mental health issues, I'm just saying in terms of the job and I'm not saying that that applies to everybody because I know there's different limitations for different people, different strokes, different folks, different situations. I'm just speaking strictly about Gabby's situation and a situation I was in, okay? So if it doesn't apply to you, that's okay. I understand that there's different circumstances for different people, okay? But besides all that, besides the legal obligation, besides the deals, besides that, I never wanted to feel like I was letting people win. I don't let other people's opinions or actions dictate mine. Yeah, that sounds about right. I don't, you know, I don't let anybody win, which is why you can never take accountability for anything. Just saying. A little too prideful to be actually sorry and admit wrongdoing. And two, this statement negates any time Gabby Hanna has ever said, I don't start drama. Like I said, go, go to my channel, go to my Twitter and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll, please. I'm begging you and try to find where I try to stir up drama. Wasn't me. If you don't let someone else's actions dictate yours, but you only respond, you don't start drama, those two things are not congruent, my friend. I'm not a mathematician or anything. I'm just not. I didn't ever want to be the image of somebody who couldn't persevere. I didn't want to go down giving anyone the satisfaction feeling like they'd won. But I was losing regardless. And like literally what would anyone be winning? And who are these people? Like this is such a far cry from just saying like, hey, I took a break because my mental health wasn't great and uh, the job wasn't bringing me happiness, so I needed to take a year off and kind of sort all that shit out. Like, have a genuine conversation. Like this, everything she does, and I've said this for a very long time, everything Gabby Hanna does feels absolutely contrived. Everything she wears looks like a costume. Everything she says sounds scripted. Every gesture she makes, it all feels so um, choreographed and contrived and this is no exception like my thing would be sit down especially after a year and just talk to your audience it doesn't need to be a performance just be a genuine person say what you think say what you felt say what you
My pride was keeping me from my peace for so long. I didn't even have the energy to properly promote my projects anyway. I literally would wake up one day and realize that a song had come out the day before and I didn't even realize it. So I didn't tell anybody about it because I forgot. That's untrue to the highest degree. There has never been, to my knowledge, unless I just absolutely missed it, there has never been a Gabby Hanna release of anything that has not been foretold by Gabby Hanna herself. <laughs> Honestly, the fiercest, most obnoxious self-promoter on really any social media platform. I would give her that award at the street meets. You did it, you're a star. Unless I'm having a se severe lapse in memory, which is possible because I'm old, but I don't think so. So once my final project came out, which was this time next year, my album that came out over a year ago. I was finally free. I didn't have any more looming projects that were kind of like nagging at me. I felt like I could actually step away without wondering, well, what if I put this out? So I officially released everything I had in the vault and I was just sitting on a clean slate, basically. See, like I, this is, I don't know, it's bothering me. Like the way she's speaking is so, it's like she's rehearsing an interview that she would have on like, a talk show. <laughs> That's what this feels like. Like when you're a kid and you're pretending you're on a talk show. Yes, my latest project is actually one I've been very, um, like I've just, I've waited with such fervor to release this masterpiece. And honestly, I feel like um, the fans are really gonna love it. It's it's kind of like my magnum opus. And um, I, I, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> you guys are so funny. Um, it's just, it's okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, <laughs> it just, everything feels just wildly, wildly contrived. And it was time to figure out, like, what's next? What do I want to do? I've been given so many amazing opportunities but for the last decade, I've been absolutely drowning in work. It's like that cliche of, you know, you work so hard for the American dream and then you work so hard that you never stop to enjoy it. And like I said, it was absolutely incredible. It's a blessing that I would not trade for the world, but I haven't had time to just simply create to create literally since I started YouTube. Choosing to monetize the things you're creating is not something that social media is putting on you that's customary with a creative career. Everything I did became a grind. I couldn't have a hobby or a passion without finding a way to monetize it because I needed to justify taking the time to do it. I can understand that. I can absolutely understand that. It's our time, especially like nowadays, I mean, is so, I don't feel like I can really relate to this because her, She's in a very fortunate position, but for so many of us, we work so fucking hard for so fucking little, and then when we're done working, we have more work to do, and it's hard to justify doing anything else because there's so much to be done, and I get that. I might not get that from her perspective of having lots of money and having the actual freedom to do things like this, but I get the gist. I didn't give myself the time or the space to practice a skill before putting it out in the public. I will agree with that. I think we've seen, I think we've seen some things. Which again, I'm grateful for all of that because it made me a lot better. I will never shy away from true constructive criticism, even if it's harsh, because I wanna know. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Face yourself, bitch. She's not a fucking artist. I don't care about her fucking because she has no accomplishments in art or has proven to me that she's actually intellectual enough to understand art. I accept my criticism from talented, smart people, not abusive, toxic, exploitative bullies on YouTube. Are you fucking joking? Are you absolutely fucking joking? I, I cannot. One of the most popular videos on my channel is about Gabby Hanna, Jimmy Snow, and Rachel Oates, okay? 
and it was a whole saga and if you want to watch it it's really long and the editing's kind of shoddy but um it's called is jimmy snow just three gabby hannas in a trench coat or something like that um and in it the part of the subject matter of that video is about the time when Rachel Oates literally like line by line went through Gabby Hanna's poetry book that Gabby sent her with the eye of someone who knows poetry very well and gave it the constructive criticism it deserved. I'm not saying Rachel Oates Tore Gabby Hanna a new asshole and she deserved it. I'm saying she gave the book and Gabby's writing the actual criticism, literary criticism, it deserved. As any book does. Any book deserves the literary criticism, right? So we're looking at it from both a subjective and an objective point of view. Is this good writing objectively? Is this good writing subjectively? The whole nine yards. And Gabby Hanna responded by calling Rachel Oates a bitch over and over and over. Face yourself, bitch. Tell, saying things like she wasn't smart enough or hasn't proved herself enough in art to be able to understand Gabby's art and things like that. So I'm sorry, listen. We should not be held to the standards of our past. We are all allowed to evolve and grow and change as people, but like, are we changing as people here, Gabby? Are we? Are we? I don't, I feel like we're probably not. I just think that's an incredibly rich statement coming from Gabby. If this statement came with, in the past, I might have been a little more sensitive to constructive criticism, but I do see its value. That would have been something. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like some specifics might have been good. Let's carry on before this video is four hours long. So yeah, I was just like really super sad and lonely and always stressed and not having fun like ever. Was snapping at people all the time, avoiding a lot of the tough inner work that you have to do in order to grow. I was in this state of arrested development. I got kind of famous and kind of rich at 23 years old. So I never had a reason. From 23 years old, I was being really heavily rewarded for minimal work and frankly, poor behavior. So which is it? You were a workhorse or you were doing really minimal work? Because now you've just contradicted yourself. The poor behavior, that stands. And I applaud you for saying so. So anyway, that last album comes out and I'm in a place to just finally stop. In my head, maybe forever, maybe not, but I kept failing. I'd get off for a few days, a couple weeks, even a couple months, but I would always buckle and come back. So I told myself, one year, just commit to a year. Give yourself this year to figure out who you are as yourself. Take the option off the table. Love yourself enough to figure out who you are outside of this glass house that you've built yourself. Alexa, play Glass House by Gabby Hanna. I feel like this just feels like complaints from a rich person. <laughs> I'm so tired of hearing rich people complain. Obviously, she weren't, she did well enough and invested her money wisely enough that she was able to take a year off and that's wonderful. Like overall, I just want to be clear, like I wish the best for this girl. I, I genuinely do. I wish for her health, mentally, physically, in her relationships. I, I genuinely hope that at some point she repairs all the burnt bridges in her life and makes right with all the people she needs to. Um, but I just, it's, I, I'm conflicted because I know this is her story to tell. Does she have to be the victim in it every single time? Like, I just, this, like, um, the softened, uh, borderline tearful sentiment about, you know, convincing yourself to take a year off. Like, what a wonderful luxury that must be. I can't even take a day off. Just for perspective, I literally can't take a day off. I can't. Or my bills don't get paid. So, like, I get it and I, I, I appreciate the sentiment of prioritizing yourself because that is very important. I appreciate the sentiment of taking care of yourself and loving yourself enough to remove yourself from the things that hurt you. 100%. 
just feel like the way the message is delivered makes me kind of um, want to throw myself out a window. Whoa. So on Valentine's Day 2023, I decided to love myself. I made my last social media post and I deleted everything. And I was serious about it and it was amazing. So here's how that went. Immediately, I was initially very sad, but in a healing, bittersweet way. It's kind of like breaking up with someone who's toxic. You're glad to be free, but it still really hurts. This is what I'm talking about. This conversation feels incredibly contrived. Like, couldn't you just sit down and not like, I don't know, I, I, I don't know, I just hate it. The way she says that, you're glad to be free, but it still really hurts. Like that, that was written beforehand and you cannot convince me that it wasn't. For a while, that was your whole world. That was all you knew. It was comfortable. It felt safe, even though it wasn't. And now that it's gone, it leaves this big empty space that you don't know how to fill or what to fill it with. I feel like I had no purpose. Like I literally didn't exist. I had nowhere to be. There were days, even weeks at a time where I was literally literally physically not seen by anybody. But eventually, and it didn't even take that long, my brain got used to not having all that dopamine all the time, all that constant distraction, and things started to feel like really nice. Quiet. Time is our most valuable asset, and so is silence. Shut the fuck up! Those are two things that the media has done a very great job at taking away from us, stealing from us. Without all this noise fighting for my attention from every corner of every screen, I started having new thoughts. Positive ones. I'm having new thoughts too. I'll let you guess whether or not they're positive. Kind ones, calm ones, generous and peaceful ones. I started journaling a lot, talking to myself, talking to God. Here we go. Creating without the pressure to release anything. Practicing skills before I shared them. It's just like completely, totally clear headed. This would also be a great time for this video to be sponsored by Skillshare. Getting back to the root of art because art is intrinsically worthless. There is no inherent value. It's it's so arbitrary. We as human beings created in God's image, the ultimate creator, we're meant to create. What about those of us who don't believe in God, but we're also creators? What are we meant to do? Burn in hell? <laughs> Sick. In his image. But we're not necessarily meant to profit off of it. My mental health skyrocketed. There was this physical rewiring of my brain. Like my brain knew that this constant dopamine wasn't coming in. So it started like producing its own. <laughs> I stopped having nightmares. I started sleeping better. My diet got better. I was able to use a lot of the time that I was on my phone to stretch and massage myself. Sick. That must be lovely. My skin cleared up. I started giving my cats a lot more long focused attention that they deserve. I was spending literally hours of the day, almost every day, just being, not doing. I was human being euthanize me so unfathomably grateful that i was able to do that it was truly a gift from god no actually it's a gift from um being financially stable it's literally a gift from having the financial means to take a year off like that's literally it so a few months in i need to like reach out to someone online through a dm so i re-downloaded the apps and i'm like okay now that I've downloaded these apps, you know, it's been a few months, maybe I can consume a little bit of media here and there. So wait, you down, you deleted them all, but you needed to DM somebody. So you downloaded all your apps? So you weren't offline. Again, I'm not a mathematician or anything. But dude, it just sucked me back in so quickly. And something I realized at every time, that was the first time it happened. But even now, when I get sucked back into that spiral, into that vortex of social media, it's like all my other bad habits instantly rush back in. My sleep schedule is bad. My diet is bad. My skincare is worse. So I'm breaking out. I'm restless. I'm sleepless. Anxiety and depression come rushing back in. I'm in physical pain. I feel empty and I keep trying to fill that hole with something. And I realized that's a God-shaped hole that I'm trying to fill. Oh, for fuck's sake. Is this like a, a fucking ad for God? Hashtag spawn. This God was gifted. I wouldn't want to break any of the FTC violations by not letting you know 
This is fucking nauseating. No real offense if you're a religious person, that's totally fine. Um, I'm, it's not my cup of tea in any capacity because as someone who was raised Catholic and Christian, um, I've seen a lot of horrors and um, I don't believe in your cloud papa, but um, as long as you keep him off my front fucking lawn, I don't mind if you do. He ain't my responsibility. I don't fuck with men, okay? I'd have been pushing him out for so long because I was choosing this outside world instead. That's what it is to sell your soul, by the way. Oh my God, how many fucking s song titles of hers is she gonna drop in this fucking, like, stupid video? I'm Now I'm getting mad. <laughs> like, I really wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt and like, be gentle, but like, fuck off with this. It's not, you know, this demon approaching you with a contract to sign in blood. Not always, anyway. It's the choices you make. It's what you decide to do for money. If you're not glorifying God, you're glorifying what is not of God. Yeah, cool. Not everybody believes in God. Because here's the thing. The core concept of religion itself, specifically, I'm just specifically talking Christianity and Catholicism and how they intersect there. Um, the core of that and really, I guess sort of any religion, but I don't know enough about other religions to make this an actual sweeping generalization. It is faith-based, right? There's a hole in your life that is God-shaped. Well, God is amorphous, right? Because God is just a concept. I think that's one thing. It's like when I was at Second City. This is life alert. Are you okay? Okay. And everybody, you know, the core value of Second City, the core message, the core thing that everybody operates off of is yes and. Not the Ariana Grande song, fuck you for that. It's yes and, which means literally I'm taking the idea that you just gave me and I'm going to build on it to create another idea. That is the core structure of improv, right? So <clears throat> um, there were people who were not actual, you know, they were just kind of along for the ride. They weren't actually entertainment types or like into improv to do improv for for like doing improv, but they were just kind of there because they like pretending that they were like uh, puppy catchers or or, you know, somebody's banana hammock that day or whatever. And they thought yes and was a literal thing, right? So when someone said they started a scene and they were like, oh, hey, Richie, how are you doing? And they'd be like, yes, and how are you doing? That's not what that means. Yes and is not like literal. And I feel the same way about God. Because even though I don't believe in God, God is more of a concept, right? Because God was never a physical person in the Bible. Jesus was, sure, um, but God was always sort of a, a concept, right? So um, I don't have to do anything in his image. No one does. Because when you die, you'll be dead. And a lot of times we're not even aware of it because of what we're being constantly told in the media. But when you get off, when you silence all these voices, you start hearing God's voice. You start talking to yourself and then start talking to God. I don't know, man. I sit in the silence a lot and um, God ain't talking to me. Should I start talking to God? What do we talk about? Our favorite episodes of the Golden Girls? If this video was presented more, because right now the way she's speaking is like, if this works for me, it'll work for you too. Like it's almost becoming an infomercial. It's already been an infomercial which tells me nothing's changed. Also, do you remember when Marie Osmond used to sell those weird dolls? That was a trip. It's been 20 years uh, here at QVC. I started when I was nine. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. Yes, I did. <laughs> so when I first got off social media and all of the noise stopped, that's when I started really hearing God. And then when I came back on, it was like all of this attention, all of my quiet time where I'm speaking to God all day, where I'm hearing from God all day, the assurance in the silence was gone. The health, the peace, the happiness, the joy, that was all gone. God never left. I was just ignoring him because I was choosing TikTok. Sorry. Like a, it's like a parody of itself. God never left. I was just ignoring him for TikTok. This is actually getting a lot deeper than I was expecting it to. Is it? Is this deep? Is this what we would call deep? This is depth. Alexa, play Shallow by Lady Gaga. Whoa. Yeah, it was totally unexpected that it turned into that. Not like this whole thing was scripted at all. This is just supposed to be a casual conversation. 
<laughs> yes, and what does God think about this? Okay, but here's the thing, and this is taking my atheism out of this. I feel like it's super easy to communicate with God and hear what you want to hear, if that makes sense. Well, you know, I feel like when you're using your intuition is those moments when what you think is your intuition are those moments where you're like, well, God, I think this is what God wants. God wants me to bone the hairy guy at the bar. I think it's what God wants. I feel it in my soul. And God's like, no, nah, no, nah, bitch. I, I said, get a cab. And you're like, yeah, this is totally what God wants me to do. You know, I'm sorry. I feel like there's gonna be a whole subsect of you who are gonna be like, I love religion. God is my everything. And that's cool. Okay. I'm not trying to make fun of you. You do what you got to do. For me personally, I find it a little stupid. Whoa. I was honestly just trying to tell you what I've been up to all year, but that's what I've been up to all year. I've been building this intimate, close relationship with God and doing everything I could to understand him. I've been letting him guide my actions. I've been letting him dictate my steps. Having experienced it through most of my young life, I just, it's not for me. And I feel like coming back after a year and being like, <laughs> I just had to get off of that social media because it was so dramatic and it's so full of noise and all of this. By the way, buy my new stuff. Does anybody want to buy my shit? Also, God. I've been letting him discipline me and heal me. I learned what it is to actually worship and pray, not to just recite the things that we're told to recite or fulfill the obligations we're told to fulfill. Not this list of rules that man tells us we need to complete in order to get to heaven. That's not what scripture says. What I learned is to actually pray, to talk to and hear from from God. And it turns out worship isn't just this chore where God wants you to tell him how awesome he is. It's definitely part of it and he deserves it. But it's also for you. When you're genuinely in a place of worship, it feels good. That's the secret they don't tell you. Worship feels good. It's like when you tell somebody that loves you that you love them, and then that person tells you that they love you too. But that's not what worship is. By and large, Worship in and of itself is typically a one-sided ordeal. Even in scripture, God is not going to worship you. You are meant to serve and worship God. So I guess I guess for me, one of the things about religion, especially people who speak like this about religion that always bother me, is sort of that like um, tunnel vision view of this. Because while God was helping Gabby Hanna heal and understand herself and understand the world and all of this um there are also like a fuck ton of palestinian women and children who are just being slaughtered and um what where's where's their god you know because they worship a different god is it is it different for them um or are they just not they're not saying the words that god wants to hear or what like what what's the what's the issue here you know um i think in the big picture you re i feel like religion can be it, it's 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 the it's one of the things that to me drives me insane because it's like this, they have this people not all people i'm not saying everybody that is religious is that way but people who speak like this specifically about religion often have that tunnel vision thing where they're like, this is what God's done for me and this is what I love about God. And then they refuse to look at the bigger picture of, you know, the things that by their estimation, God would be in control of, right? Um, but they they don't want to talk about that because it's not, it doesn't fit into the the dialogue of of what works for them. So if it doesn't serve them specifically, then it's not worth talking about. You know what I mean? I'm not saying she needed to come back and do a whole situation on, on the Middle East or like involve herself in um, current events or, you know, uh, make a public statement in any way about any of that. I'm just saying like, when we talk about religion like this and what God has done for, for, for us as people, we need to look at all the horrors that are persisting in this world. And um, 
look outside of ourselves in that way. I don't know, I just feel like a lot of talk like this about religion is just so absolutely self-serving. I mean, there's nothing, I mean, I know this video is about her coming back to the internet, but, you know, before the manic episode, before we, whatever kind of psychotic break she might have had, or mental health issues she might have had, uh, you know, Gabby hurt a lot of fucking people. She was nasty and horrible to a lot of people. And, um, you know, listen, I, I genuinely believe that people can learn and grow and move on and move forward, except for James Charles, Jeffree Star, Shane Dawson, Colleen Bellinger. I don't think we should hold people to, I mean, as long as they're not like criminal transgressions, I don't feel like we should hold them necessarily accountable f or hold their feet to the fire necessarily forever. But I also think it's important to make amends. I think coming into this video saying, hey, I know, here's here's what happened, here's what's going on, this is what I discovered. Um, I also want to say, you know, um, you know, I want to apologize to so-and-so. And even if it's not public to say, you know, I've reached out to so-and-so privately, we've discussed this, just want to point that out. Something. Oh my god, I cannot stop talking. Shut the fuck up! When you learn to actually tell God that you love him and act in a way that shows that you love him sincerely and fully with your whole mind, heart, body, and soul, God says, I love you too. So anyway, the rest of the year, I'm going in and out of downloading the apps, deleting the apps, downloading them, deleting them. Okay, so you weren't offline. You were deleting the apps and downloading the apps and deleting the apps and downloading the apps. We're... When were you offline? And I did find a lot of value in them. Social media is not evil. Social media is a tool that can be used for good and for evil. It's like I was finally learning this balance and how to curate what I was consuming. We're the sum of the top five people we spend the most time with, right? We are what we eat. We become what we consume. But I learned a lot on social media. I learned a lot about my faith on social media. I was incredibly inspired by a lot of influencers and artists who are creating amazing, interesting, cool, actually cool music that isn't about sex and drugs and money. And Girl, let's not pretend, let's not pretend that you did not come up on fucking YouTube specifically, not like post Vine. Let's not talk about your come up on YouTube and how every video was about your shitty dates, people you'd hooked up with, all that, or the longest weed phase of and everybody's fucking lives where everybody was dude and fucking you couldn't turn around without smoking a blunt like uh, what the f and literally like we're literally listening to on the airwaves and we're so desensitized to sex and it's crazy we're listening to murder on the airwaves yeah no shit maybe the issue isn't with how much we're consuming these things, it's how much they're happening. Such as gun violence, which is the number one killer of children by a fucking landslide in this country. Where's God then, Gabby? Where's your God? Where's he at? So glad you're healing. How desensitized we are to sex and and vanity and greed and pride. Like it's literally so evil and that's one major thing, I would say the major thing, that stepping away from social media and being alone without any outside influence led to, it was an awakening. When you're consuming all this stuff, you are sleeping. And when you get back to who you are as a human being, you wake up. And it's a little bit scary because you're waking up from a literal nightmare. Okay, here's the thing. I, I feel like people can relate to being very much steeped in social media. However, consuming yourself that deeply in social media is either your fault or straight up addiction. Um, because here's the thing, we all doom scroll. We all have seen horrific things. We all have gotten into arguments. We all have seen all the shitty sides of social media. But as an adult, presuming you don't have like legitimate addictive tendencies and you are not legitimately addicted 
to social media, which it sounds like Gabby actually fucking is. Um, the rest of us do know how to turn it off. I don't think it's as uncommon as she thinks. Like when I, when the internet gets to be too depressing, I stop swiping and I turn it the fuck off and I go do something else. Because I feel like that's part of having a balance in your life. I don't think that that's insane. Do you feel that way? Do you, are you able to unplug? Are you still with me? My voice hurts. The internet is a really powerful resource as long as you're not abusing it. I wholeheartedly believe that in the not so distant future, social media addiction is going to come to the forefront of culture. It's going to be a real diagnosis. It's going to require real rehabilitation. It's harming people physically, mentally, socially. It's putting relationships at risk. It's putting jobs at risk. And so many people are so absolutely hooked and living for the hit dying for the hit and it was substantially harder for me to quit than literal drugs for me and i'm sure for so many others it's a sickness and the bigger you get the worse it gets you keep chasing that high of having that one viral moment well honestly to me i don't disagree that social media has uh, addictive properties to it and i do think you can legitimately be addicted to it I do think that the younger generations are smarter than that, even though they have grown up on it. I don't think they're as like in your face phone time all the time as, again, Gabby is kind of insinuating. I, I really, I feel like this is very, I, I feel like this is just very Gabby specific because I don't feel like even as a creator myself, I've made a lot of videos. I've made a lot of videos about specific people, Gabby herself. I've made a lot of videos about things I know about. I've made videos because it's time to make money that month. Um, I don't ever feel, and maybe this is just me, I don't ever feel that. I don't feel the need to chase numbers or uh, virality or I don't, I don't feel the need to chase it ever. And like my views now are like substantially lower than they used to be and that's fine. I'm good with that. It doesn't bother me. And even then, like in my heyday when I was getting really good views, I don't, I don't, I never was like, oh, I have to keep it going. How do I keep it going? I must keep it going. Like I, I just don't, I'm not that kind of person. Are you that kind of person? Shut the fuck up! You keep seeking that love and approval and validation of others. Each time you have a viral moment, you're reinforcing that behavior. And when it doesn't come, when you don't get that hit, you start spiraling and start acting in ways that are outside of your character. It's something you tell yourself is fine. You can control it. You can stop it whenever. But is it fine? Can you control it? Can you stop whenever? Could you delete your apps right now and be totally okay with it? Yeah, I literally could. I'd be fine. I'd be bored at work tomorrow, but I'd be fine. Listen, if it don't apply, let it fly. Done. I believe it's time for me to fly. But I know a lot of people are relating, especially digital creators. And no, it's not lost on me. But as a digital creator, as somebody who creates content, who creates music, who creates art, who's creating clothing, who wants you to engage with that, who's relying on ears and eyeballs, how ironic it is for me to tell people they should consume less social media. But that's how important I think it is. Because if I have this valuable information, this amazing life-changing experience, and I don't share it, that's beyond gatekeeping. That is literally evil. Okay. And I love you and I do not hate you. So if something I'm saying is resonating with you and you feel like you need to delete your apps, God bless you, Godspeed. Go to GabbyHannaOfficial.com and sign up for texts and emails to be alerted when I put out new clothes or new music. Does anybody want to buy my shit? I would say that uh, aside from the sex and murder, um, one of the uh, perils of social media is the consumeristic part. The algorithmic uh, forefront of ads and uh, pushing products constantly. And Gabby, you're no better. You're doing it right now. The irony of having a whole video talking about, and I know she said it's not lost on her, but um, the irony of having an entire video about how toxic social media can be and all of the horrors that persist upon it, and yet shameless self-promotion throughout. Let's be serious. We're here to promote stuff. 
um, because you can't take an, you know more than a year off financially probably is my guess. So let me tell you just how bad my addiction was. After I moved home, I re-downloaded some apps to help me kind of, you know, soothe the anxiety. You know, just like a drink to take the edge off. And immediately, I'm metaphorically passed out in a metaphorical ditch. No metaphorical idea where my metaphorical keys and wallet are. So I downloaded this app called App Block, which not sponsored, but highly recommended. It is so awesome. Basically, you can lock yourself out of your app and depending on the level of restriction that you choose, you're you're out and you cannot get back in. It is a very great tool that will make you very happy. But this is how sick I am. I block my apps immediately. I downloaded a dating app. I went to app block. I filled out all the information. I blocked the apps. I closed app block. And then I went to the app store and downloaded a dating app. That's how serious it was. Just because I needed something to swipe on. I needed the validation of strangers. Okay. <sighs> That sounds like it might be a more deeply seated issue than social media. I mean, does God know a good therapist? Cause like you should probably go talk to them. So I was on there for a week exactly. I went on two of the worst dates I've ever been on. And then I deleted the app and added it to the block list. You're welcome for the story time video, link down below. Oh good, we're getting back to our roots. Only this time they feature God. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude, all this to say, Man, I really was thriving without social media. I was having a real good time. I felt really nice, but here's why I came back. Because I'm a creator, I'm an artist, I'm an author, I'm a musician, I'm a songwriter, I'm a designer. I want to share things. That is who God made me to be. And he also didn't give me all of this perseverance and tenacity and ambition and drive to just throw it away. Okay, um, you don't have to throw it away. A lot of artists, authors, musicians, creators do not exist on social media. It's like in one in one lane she's like, "Oh god, things were so, are so much better without social media." <laughs> but they can still be used as a tool. But I have to use them because I'm a creator. It's like she's just going through the whole spectrum of feelings like right right in front of us. He didn't give me all of this influence to throw it away. Wait, so he didn't give you all this influence for you to throw it away. So you know that you have influence. So we're, rem we're remembering that we have influence. Wouldn't God want you to, I don't know, make amends with people you've hurt? Admit to the things you did wrong? I don't know. I'm not a mathematician. So I talked to a lot of friends about it. I talked to myself about it and I prayed a lot about it. And ultimately I have to be online to do the things that I know God is calling me to do. That's right. And you can contact God at God. 11111 at aol.com for advice as well. And I want to do those things. Like, you know, sometimes in life we have to do things we're not super amped about or even things that scare us. No one really likes to wake up and go to work every day. And this is what it is for me to wake up and go to work every day. And the fact that this is what it is for me to wake up and go to work every day is incredible. This is what God called me to do. And he gave me a whole year to figure out how to do it the right way. And coming back, I'm actually not worried about the hate or criticism or backlash or whatever it is. I think I've proven to myself at this point that I can withstand just about anything. People have said the worst and done the worst to me as far as online stuff goes. Yeah, I mean, I will not um, deny that people have been cruel to Gabby Hanna online, um, but Gabby Hanna has also been legitimately cruel to others online, unprovoked. God's calling, and he's still wondering where all that accountability is. They have attacked me from every angle and I'm still here. You cannot stop me. The only one that can stop me is God if he so chooses and he's on my team. My hesitancy was actually the fear that I wouldn't be strong enough to handle the praise. Yeah, I also have that fear. It keeps me up at night while I'm scrolling on Twitter because I've made the mistake before of letting the praise of people make me. And so I let the hate of people break me. So now as I'm coming back into this, I'm performing for an audience of one, but anyone else is welcome to stay for the show. And I hope you do. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. What a truly beautifully unscripted time that was. It's been a long time since Gabby Hanna's made me, I wouldn't say I was mad, but aggravated. I think aggravated is a good way to describe it. Um, final thoughts. G 
God's here, and he said, not much has changed. At the core of it, I wish her health and happiness, e even if we see things differently. Uh, I do hope that at some point she does take real accountability for the things she's done in her past. Obviously, that's probably not going to happen. Um, and I hope that her time now on social media does not send her into the same sort of spiral we've seen in the past because that shit was disturbing as hell to watch and I'm sure disturbing as hell to live. Um, so yeah. Gabby Sands, welcome back. I missed you. Hope you're doing well. I hope you're all thriving. Um, the rest of you, thanks for being here. Well, you too, Gabby Stans. Thank you for being here too. Anyway, I am going to go have a lozenge and some tea and a, um, a, perhaps a Werther's Original. And you guys all have a good night. And uh, stay tuned for the outtakes if there are any. There's definitely going to be a coughing compilation. And I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Um, bye. I started when I was nine. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yes, I did. There's definitely going to be a cough compilation at the end of this video. Mm. I'm sorry, I had an energy drink. I, I'm powered up. <coughs> um... Twitter's the dark web. I just spit. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to spit at you. You look nice. <coughs> <coughs> oh my god. Oh, who's she? There's like a little fuzz on my nose and it's really bothering me. <coughs> Pretty standard. <coughs> I don't have enough fingers. This is Life Alert. Are you okay? I'm calling for help right now.